Hello and assalamu alaikum. A very warm welcome to the Audit and Assurance Online Classes. I am your tutor, Kashif Kamran. Now, today is the orientation session for these online classes. And in this orientation session, you will get to know all about audit and assurance. So by the end of the orientation class, you will be very sound and very clear about the AA paper and the expectations of the AA paper and even the challenges of the AA paper and how to overcome them. So we have a very excited orientation class today, uh, which is about the AA paper. So let's start the journey. Let's start the orientation of the AA paper. Now, first of all, I would like to introduce myself as a tutor. I am Kashif Kamran. And in terms of my qualifications, I am a fellow chartered certified accountant. I also have a certificate in international auditing and I am a CA finalist from the Institute of Chartered Accountant of Pakistan. In terms of my experience, uh, it's been 14 plus years since I am teaching the ACCA qualification and my core specialization lies in the AA paper, the AAA paper and the SPL paper. Though I have spent most of my time teaching the AAA paper, but on and off whenever I get time, I do spend time with the AA paper as well because that's my base from where I started my teaching career. I'm also a registered mentor for the Oxford Brookes University research projects. Uh, in terms of my achievements, I have been associated with ACCA Pakistan for the webinars, the practice to pass webinars, and I've conducted 12 ACCA webinars with ACCA Pakistan from March 2018 to June 2021. Uh, in terms of my affiliation, uh, I am the, I, I head uh, the online teaching platform, which is the Online Lecturers Academy. And these lectures are being conducted through the Online Lecturers Academy platform. Uh, I'm also associated with PAC, which is a gold approved learning provider of ACCA in Lahore, Pakistan. And I'm also associated with the PAC School of Online Learning. I am also associated with Tabani School of Accountancy, which is a platinum approved learning provider of ACCA in Karachi, Pakistan. And I'm also associated with Zivit College in India for students, uh, for connecting myself with students in India. So this is my tutor profile. And now let's start with the main uh, purpose of this uh, session today, which is the orientation of the AA paper. Welcome to the orientation. Okay, let's start with about AA. Uh, let's see what you need to know about AA and please be sure we're taking the international stream of the AA paper. So a lot of times students ask, I, are they either we're taking the UK stream or the international stream? Uh, we're taking the international stream, right? So you will find that word INT. That means this is an international stream of the AA paper we are looking into. Okay. Let's see what sort of a prior knowledge you need as a student when you're preparing yourself for the AA paper. Uh, what sort of knowledge you should have in your mind from your prior papers at the applied skill level or at the applied knowledge level. Now, in terms of the prior knowledge, uh, when you look at the AA paper, the AA paper requires the prior knowledge of four papers. And I'll clarify what sort of knowledge is required. Uh, the AB paper, the account, accountant in business paper, the FA paper, the financial accounting paper, the corporate law paper, the law paper, and the financial reporting paper. Now, uh, if you have studied these four papers prior to the AA paper, uh, in, the, in the AB paper, the accountant in business paper, you must have got a knowledge about internal audit and external audit you might have got some knowledge about corporate governance. Uh, you might have got some knowledge about internal controls. So in the AB paper, you must have got some diversified knowledge about internal controls, about audit, about internal audit, about external audit, about corporate governance, etc. Uh, in the FA paper, the financial accounting paper, this one, and in the financial reporting paper, you must have got knowledge about international accounting standards and international financial reporting standards because the accounting knowledge 
uh, at a certain point in the AA paper will play a crucial part in terms of picking up some problems from the case study. So uh, the accounting standards you must have done in the FA paper and the accounting standards you have done in the FR paper will be valuable. So if you have forgot them, you should start revising them. Uh, the accounting standards you have done in the FA paper and the accounting standards you have done in the FR paper. So please ensure you start revising them if you have forgot them. If you still have them in mind, that's perfect. But the need of the IAS and the need of the IFRS is quite valuable in the AA paper in certain context, which I will clarify once we go into the topic uh, which needs the understanding of IAS and IFRS. Then the corporate law paper, uh, lots of knowledge about auditor's power, auditor's duty, uh, who appoints the auditor, how is auditor appointed, what are the duties of the auditor, what are the powers of the auditor, uh, and even about corporate governance, even about corporate governance, even about agency relationship. So these are quite diversified topic and scattered topics you have done over the past four papers. So I hope you're all clear on that, right? Uh, the amount of knowledge uh, coming from the prior paper, but two papers are extremely important, right? The FA paper and the FR paper. So to me, you should have a very sound knowledge coming from the FR paper and the FA paper in terms of the accounting standard. So that is very important. AB paper and CL paper, if you have even forgot them, no issues. But the knowledge from the FA and the FR is extremely important when you are studying the AA paper. I hope you're all sound and clear on that. If you can just drop a message in the chat box about it. Are you all sound and clear about the prior knowledge structure needing, uh, needing uh, around the AA paper? Okay, that's great, thank you. Okay, now moving further from the prior knowledge and its contribution to the AA paper, uh, let's move on and start to look at the passing rates of the AA paper. Now, when you look at the passing rates of the AA paper in the last five exam settings, look at the passing rates in front of your screen for the last five exam settings. Uh, it's around 40% and slightly above 40%, which is not bad. So uh, when you look at the passing rates of AA uh, and you look at the applied skill papers, uh, the passing rates of the AA paper is very much close to the PM paper, the performance management paper, because the other papers you have in, at, the, at the level of applied skill, like the TX paper, the tax paper, or the FR paper, the financial reporting paper, or the financial management paper, they all have very healthy passing rates, uh, either into 50s or into very higher 40s, higher 40s. But when you look at the PM paper and you look at the AA paper, they have very low passing rates. That's like uh, to, to the late 30s or the early 40s. So you can see the late 30s here, late 30s, and you can see the early 40s here. So you need to understand that there is a challenge to pass the AA paper, and you should be prepared for that challenge. Uh, over the course of my presentations and lectures coming up, I will be guiding you about the challenges in every topic. And what are the challenges uh, which you need to face and what exactly are the obstacles you need to face when you're studying for the AA paper? Because lots of students get failed in the very first attempt of the AA paper as well. If you imagine 39% as the recent passing rate, that means a substantial portion of students get failed in the first exam sitting. Lots of students in the AA paper get flunked at 47, 48, and 49. So we need to investigate the reasons. We need to find the reasons why students fail in the first exam sitting of the AA paper. Some students even say AA is a very difficult paper. Some students even struggle with the AA paper, like they've given two attempts, three attempts, four attempts, and they pass the AA paper in like the third and fourth attempt. But again, you need to look at the positive side of it, that there are certain number of students who get through in the very first exam sitting, provided you have the right guidance, you have the right direction, you have the right resources 
and you follow the footstep of the tutor, whatever the tutor is guiding you, you're following it, you will be among the students who pass the double A in the first exam sitting. So please ensure that uh, you listen carefully to the challenges of the double A paper when the tutor is guiding you about that, that what are the reasons why student fail uh, fail to pass the double A paper in the first attempt, most of them, and they struggle with it. So we'll find those reasons uh, even today. We'll find those reasons even in the course, uh, course which will build up after the orientation class. But please ensure you have to spend a very good time on the double A paper. You need to make a weekly timetable you need to make a daily a schedule of studying the double A paper. This is not a paper which you will take casually. And this is not a paper you will say, okay, I'll, I'll study in the last 15 days. No, this is a paper which needs a weekly timetable from all of you. So please ensure you make a weekly timetable when you look at the passing rates on your screen, which are in low, uh, which are in late 30s and early 40s. So that means there is a lot of struggling around here which needs to be implemented. So I hope you will all show your commitments. You will all show your passion. You will all make your timetables after the orientation class today. You need to study at least eight hours, eight to 10 hours on a weekly basis, eight to 10 hours on a weekly basis. So I, I hope that's not a lot, eight to 10 hours on a week. So try to allocate eight to 10 hours on a double A paper on a weekly basis as we build up the course. Uh, initially, the time spent on the AA will be less because the course will be building up. But as the course gets built up, you need to spend at least eight to 10 hours on a weekly basis. So th this is how things should work for you, right? Uh, I'll be exploring challenges as I proceed further into the orientation and later in my proper classes. Paper format. I hope you're all excited to know about that because when you're studying a paper, you should know the paper format, right? You should know what is the paper format because that's exactly the main thing you should control yourself on. Let's look at uh, what is inside a 100 marks AA paper. Now, when you look at a AA paper, there are two sections in the AA paper. The section A, which is of 30 marks. And in the 30 marks section A, you have the objective type questions. That is the OT cases. You have three OT cases in the 30 marks. So for 30 marks in the section A, you have three OT cases, objective type questions, right? So you will have a small case study. And after the small case study, you will have with every case study, case number one, case number two, case number three, with every case study, you will have five OTs worth 10 marks. Then another five OTs worth 10 marks. Then another five OTs worth 10 marks. So that's 30 marks. So each OT is worth two marks. And in total, how many OTs you have? 15. 15 OTs multiplied by two is equal to 30. So every case study will have five OTs, right? So you will read a small case study followed by five objective type questions. And you need to, you need to take the right answer. A, B, C, D, which is the right answer. So you will have five objective type questions with every case study. So how many OT cases we have? Three OT cases, right? And every OT case has five OT questions. One, two, three, four, five. And every OT question will have choices, A, B, C, D, or A, B, C, and you need to take the right answer. Right, just like the multiple choice questions, right? So section A is the objective type questions worth 30 marks and the knowledge and the reading of the book and the study of the full syllabus will play a crucial part because the more knowledge you have, the better you will be in the 30 marks section, which is a section A. Is everyone clear with the section A? Is everyone uh, understanding the section A of the paper? So section A is a 30 mark section with three OT cases and every OT case has five questions. So in total, three OT cases and every OT case have five questions. So you need to read the case study. And after the case study, you will see the five OT questions and you need to solve them, right? Now, what is the time management for that? I'll come to it. And what exactly a OT question focus on? I'll be coming to that shortly. Moving next, there is a section B of the paper. 
and the section B of the paper is worth 70 marks means it plays a crucial part in your success and failure. You have to score significant number of marks from the section B to ensure you pass the AA paper in the first attempt. Now, the section B of 70 marks consists of three questions and they are constructed response questions. They're constructed response question. That means you need to type the answer. You need to write the answer. So you need to write the answers, a proper answer. They're not multiple choice questions. They're not OT questions. They're constructed response questions. So that means you need to write the answer, proper answer. The question number one is of 30 marks. The question number two is 20. The question number three is 20. So that makes 70. And they're case studies, right? The question number one, you'll get a case study followed by the requirements. You read the requirements and write the answer. Question number two, a case study. You read the requirements and you answer. Question number three, you have a case study. You read the case study. You look at the requirements and you answer. So these are case studies, right? And case studies followed by multiple requirements. And you answer each of those requirements by typing the answer because you have the computer-based exams, right? <clears throat> so this is how the section B looks into. So section B is the constructed response area and the section A is the OT cases, right? So you have a blend of knowledge. You have a blend of knowledge and you have a blend of application. So if you have weak knowledge, you will fail the AA paper, right? Because you need a lot of knowledge to pass the OT cases. And then you need to have a good application to pass the section B. So it's a blend of knowledge and a blend of application going together. Is that clear to all of you, the section A and section B, before we go deep inside section A and then deep inside section B to investigate what exactly examiner expects from you in the section A and the section B of the paper, right? Okay, that's great. We'll be working on the time management as well, right? Uh, how much time to be allocated on section A and section B? What is the total time you have in the paper? Uh, how much time you should spend on reading and planning and how much time you should spend on writing. I, I will be covering each and every aspect today in my orientation session. So section A and section B is what is in the paper, 30 and 70. That's how it looks like. Okay, moving further. Section A, let's do a deep investigation of section A, which is the 30 marks section, which consists of the OT cases, right? So let's look at the section A, 30% of the paper. 30% of the paper and consisting of OT cases. Let's see what uh, you should know about this section A of the paper. Now section A of the paper, right? This section is comprised of three questions referred to as OT cases. I just mentioned that, right? So you have a total of three questions, yeah? And each question is followed by five multiple choice questions. So you have three questions, referred to as OT cases. Case number one, case number two, and case number three. Normally, examiner says scenario one, scenario two, and scenario three. And every scenario is followed by five questions. Each question contains a single scenario. So you will get a single scenario with each question against which five objective test items worth two marks each are set. Therefore, each OT case is worth 10 marks, right? So you will have a small case study. You'll read that small case study and followed by that, you have five multiple choice questions, right? Just, just let me show you from an, uh, from an old paper. Uh, just give me one minute for that. I'll, I'll show you the practice platform later in the session today, but just to ensure that you're getting the right uh, understanding of the section A, just let me put a question in front of you, which illustrate how the section A is structured in terms of a case study followed by the objective type questions. So you will be more clear with that. You just give me one minute. So I can open that question up for you and you can look into it. Okay, can, can you see a question paper in front of you, the March, June 19 exam paper in front of your screen, everyone? Uh, 
can you all see this exam paper in front of your screen? Uh, March, June 19. Okay. Now, I was telling you that there is a section A. Can you all see section A now on your screen? There is a section A, right? So section A consists of OT cases. You have one OT case followed by five questions, right? Look at this. Can you see there is a case study here on your screen? Uh, a case study telling us about a tree company, telling us about a bush company, and the case study goes on. There is a case study going here. And after the case study, can you see the five questions? So question number one, asking you which is the right answer, A, B, C, D. So you have a case study, you read the case study, and after the case study, you have five multiple choice questions or OT questions, and you need to take in the right answer. Is A the right answer? Is B the right answer? Is C the right answer? Is D the right answer? And you go this way down. The question number two, the question number three, the question number four, and the question number five. So that completes one OT case. So one case study followed by five questions, right? Move on. You get the second case. You read a case study in front of your screen. Again, this is a case study. You read through this case study. You understand what the case study is telling you. And after the case study, the examiner will ask you another five questions. Now, five questions have gone. So the number comes six. Six, number seven, number eight, number nine, number 10. So 10 questions gone out of the total 15 OT case questions you have. Then you open the third case study. You read the case study, a small one. And after this case study, examiner asks you the, another five questions, 11, 12, 13, 14, and 15. And you need to take in the right answer. And the total worth here is 30 marks. Is everyone clear? So you have three case studies and every case study followed by five questions. In total, you have 15 OT questions to answer. And each OT question is worth two marks, making it a total 30 marks. Is that clear to all of you? So are you understanding the section A now? So section A is worth 30 marks. How many OT cases we have in section A, everyone? How many OT cases we have in section A? Three. And in every case, how many questions we have? In every case, how many questions we have? Five. Right, that's perfect. Wonderful. Okay, let's move back to the presentation we were on. So we were discussing the section A, right? We were discussing that there are three OT cases in section A and every OT case consists of five OT questions you need to answer. The OT cases can be set from any area of the syllabus. Look at this. They can be set from any area of the syllabus. So the broader the syllabus you know, the greater the syllabus you know, and the more understanding you have of the syllabus, the better you are. So the OT cases can be set from any area of the syllabus. There will be a mix of knowledge and application question. There will be a mix of knowledge and an application question. This is interesting. Try to understand this. There will be a mix of knowledge and application questions allocated to each case. So now when you look at the case one, for example, and the case one, is going on ethics. Now, some of the questions will relate to the scenario. So if you read the scenario, you can take in the right answer. And some of the questions might relate to the topic ethics, not connected to the case study. So suppose uh, you're reading a case and from the case, uh, you can answer the question number one, question number two, and question number three. But the question number four is just on the book knowledge around the topic on which the case has been made. Are you getting my point? So if you have five questions with every case study, will all the five questions be application? Will all the five questions be linked to the case study? No, some of them will be, and some of them will just be testing your knowledge. So when you look at the uh, objective test questions, how many objective test questions do you have in total? 15. So will all 15 relates to the case study? No. Some of them will relate to a case study and some of them will relate to a knowledge. Now, as per my prior observation of the AA paper, uh, ideally, uh, when you look at the 15, 15 OT questions, 10 OT questions are connected to the case and five OT questions are knowledge. 10 OT questions are connected to the case, I, mostly, mostly, and five OT questions are on knowledge. So if an OT case is on ethics, 
uh, and the OT case on ethics have five questions. Three of those OT questions might be connected to a case study and two of them or one of them might be testing your knowledge about ethics. So the book reading is important. Understanding the book is important, right? So is everyone clear with the bullet number three on your screen? So there will be a blend of knowledge and sorry, a blend of knowledge and a blend of application when you look at the OT cases. So book reading becomes extremely important. The last bullet. Given that section A is worth 30 marks, sorry, section A is worth 30 marks, 54 minutes is to be spent on this section because for every one mark, we have 1.8 minutes as a general rule of thumb. So I simply multiplied 30 marks with 1.8 and I got 54 minutes allocated to the section A. Now in 54 minutes, how much should I spend on reading and planning? And how much should I spend in taking the right answer? I will be giving you a breakup of that in the orientation session, so don't worry about it. We'll do a proper analysis of the time management, right? So the total time you have for section A is how much? 54 minutes. That is 30 marks multiplied by 1.8 minutes because the total time you have of the paper is three hours. So three hour means 180 minutes and 100 marks Divide that by 100 marks. So that means 1.8 minutes per mark. So 30 multiplied by 1.8 is 54 minutes. Now, how much time will you spend on reading and planning? And how much time will we spend on writing? I will be giving you a breakdown of that. Is everyone clear with section A? Is everyone sound with section A? Uh, is everyone clear with what the section A will test you for? Okay, that's great. Okay, now I'm just taking on my Word file. Uh, which I will be using as my whiteboard and everything I write on the word file will be shared with you. So don't worry about it. So everything I'll write on the word file become the class notes and it will be shared with you and you can take a print out of that and it will be for every lecture. So this is the word file in front of your screen. Can you see a word file in front of your screen now for the orientation session? So everything I write here will be coming to you and you will take a print out of it, right? So this is something I use as a whiteboard. Now, what have we understood so far? We are understanding the exam, sorry. We are understanding the exam structure. The first thing, exam structure or the paper structure. And the first thing we're understanding that the paper structure consists of a section A and the paper structure consists of a section B. Now we're investigating the section A, right? Section A is worth 30 marks. You all should be very clear on that. And these 30 marks uh, consist of three OT cases, three OT cases with each case consisting of each case consisting of five OT questions. Thus, in total, you have 15 OT questions to solve worth two marks each, in total 30 marks for the entire section. Right, so the, that's in total you have 15 OTs to solve worth two marks each in total 30 marks for the entire section. And the time management you have for the section A is 54 minutes. The time management for section A is 54 minutes. Now, how would you break this 54 minutes into a reading and planning time and a writing time? I will be coming across that shortly, but that's currently the summary of the section A we get over. One thing very important in section A, which we just discussed today, was that uh, not all 15 OT questions, not all 15 OT questions are connected to the case, connected to the case study. Some of them, some of them will be testing your knowledge around the topic, will be testing your knowledge around the topic. So not all 15 OD questions are connected to the case study, right? Some of them will be testing your knowledge around the topic. Is that clear? So uh, you should have good knowledge of the subject matter. And then some of the OT cases will be, uh, will be getting solved just on the 
good reading of the case study. So that's how the section A looks like. Now let's venture into section B. Let's see what you need to know about section B. And then let's come across winding up our discussion on the paper structure. Okay, so in section B, we have three questions, right? One, two, three, one uh, of 30 marks and two of 20 marks, right? Let's find the answer to the section B of the paper. Section B of the paper, a very critical section because it's a constructed response area. And in the constructed response area, you need to type in the answer. The section contains three constructed response questions. I hope you can all see the PowerPoint back again and will be comprised of one 30 marks question and two 20 marks question, right? So you have one 30 marks question and two 20 marks question making up the 70 marks in the section B. So this is a constructed response area. All questions in section B will predominantly require a written response. So you have to type the answer. However, questions may also, questions may also require calculations and interpretations of some basic ratios in the context of planning or review or calculation of materiality. There are only two things which requires a calculator in the AA paper. One is the calculation of materiality and one is the calculation of the ratios. So you need to calculate the ratios. Sometimes the question asks you in the AA paper, uh, calculate five ratios, calculate three ratios. So you have to use the calculator calculating the ratios. So uh, sometime that's not in every exam question. So there might be an element of uh, calculation but that element of calculation is just confined to two things. Number one, ratios, calculations. Number two, materiality. So that is the only calculation you need in the double paper. But again, that's not in every single exam sitting. Sometimes you get a question on ratios. Materialities is a more regular feature of the double paper. And almost in every paper, you need to calculate the materiality. So I think materiality calculation is a regular feature of every single exam paper. Ratios might come in a certain exam setting, might not come in a certain exam setting, right? So it's a constructed response question with some minor calculation. So that's how the section B looks like. I hope you're all clear on that, right? So let's go back, construct the answer for section B. Section B is a, a 70 marks section comprising of three questions with question one worth 30 marks and question two and question three each worth 20 marks each. Now, this is the section B. Uh, is Section B uh, is a constructed response section. It's a constructed response section. So you need to type in your answer. Type in your answer as you write a proper answer, right? There will be some calculation involved in the AA paper, uh, so use of calculator is a must. Calculations, calculations are only limited to are only limited to number one, materiality calculation. Materiality calculation. That's that's in every AA paper. That's in every AA paper. And secondly is the ratios calculation. Ratios calculation. Uh, it's, you might find this in some of the AA papers, not all, right? So you might be lucky enough if you get the ratio calculations in your paper, because it's not a regular feature. Sometimes you get it, sometimes you don't. But materiality calculation is a regular feature of the AA paper. That's what you have to do every time. So using the calculator becomes almost important in the AA paper, whether you use the on-screen calculator or you carry your own calculator with whichever you are comfortable. A lot of students are comfortable with their own calculators, taking them to the uh, exam halls where you are attempting the computer-based exams. And some of you are very comfortable with the on-screen calculator. So you have to find your own answers for that, right? So is everyone clear with the bullets of section B so far? Uh, because you will get this word file and you will take a print out of this, right? And you will save this word file with all of with, with you. Okay, moving back to the section B quickly. In terms of section B, 
let's first look at the 30 marks question. What to expect from a 30 marks question? The question worth 30 marks will be based around a detailed scenario. So you will get a detailed scenario. I'll just show you a glimpse of that. Uh, it is a detailed scenario. I'm just showing you a PDF version of it. Uh, I'm not currently going on the practice platform before we start the proper classes. So if I just show you a glimpse of the section B again. Okay. Can you all see the section B on your screen? Section B, all three questions are compulsory and must be attempted. Now look at the structure of section B. Uh, you have a long case study. See, you have a long case study. The case study is in front of your screen. Frisia company. And examiner is telling you about the Frisia company sales, purchase and inventory. And examiner is telling you about the payroll. And then the examiner is coming down with the requirements, requirements of the case study. And then again, there are small case studies like this. Small case studies like this here. You have small case studies here. So it's almost like a two page question that the question number one worth 30 marks is covering almost the two pages. Now, uh, when we see it on the computer based exam, that will be different because we'll be looking at it on the screen, right? So it's a long reading. It's a long reading, right? When you look at the section B. So it's a detailed scenario. And candidates will be required to answer several requirements. There might be three requirements, four requirements, five requirements uh, with the question number one worth 30 marks. So they might be A, B, C, D, or they might be A, B, C, D, E. So you have to be prepared for answering multiple requirements with a detailed scenario. The 30 mark question will predominantly test the areas of planning and risk assessment. So that's one very important area. Number one. So the question number one mostly is made on planning and risk. Mostly, mostly, right? It is also made on internal controls. Number two. And audit evidence. Audit evidence three. Uh, I've rarely seen the question number one coming on audit evidence, but mostly it's on planning and risk. Mostly sometime. Uh, it's on internal control. But these are three important areas which contributes heavily to the question number one, risk assessment, internal controls, and audit evidence. Although the scenario may focus on one, on one particular section of the audit process. In addition, other syllabus areas may feature in this question. It's, it's up to the examiner, right? But the predominant part of the question number one is coming from risk assessment, internal controls and audit evidence. These are three critical areas of your syllabus, right? And they, they, they contribute heavily to a 70 marks paper. Uh, you might get planning and risk in the question number one, and you might get internal controls in the question number two, and you might get something about audit evidence in the question number two. They, they do contribute heavily. So either they are in the question number one or they are in the question number two, right? So you have to consider them as important areas. Given that the question will focus on a detailed scenario, it is likely that there will be several issues and requirements to be dealt with, and this may include knowledge and application. Again, in the question number one worth 30 marks, not everything will link to the case study. There might be a blend of application and a blend of knowledge, just like the section A. So will the entire 30 marks be, uh, be application? No. Some of the 30 marks will require knowledge. Is that clear to all of you? So some of the 30 marks will require knowledge and the major portion of the 30 marks will require your application. So that's important, right? Candidates will be expected to analyze the information included in the scenario uh, to identify the relevant points to answer the question. When you have a case study, you have to sync your answer with the case study, right? When you have a case study, you need to read the case study. You need to find the relevant points from the case study. You need to sync your answer with the case study. You need to blend your answer with the case study. You cannot just say, okay, I'll read the case study, but I'll write my own answer. No, you have to ensure that when you're writing the answer, your answer is blended with the case study or your answer is sync with the case study. And that is one of the main reasons why students fail in the AA paper in the section B, because they're not connecting their answer with the case study. They're writing a isolated answer or they're writing a generic answer. If you're writing a generic answer, despite the fact examiner has given you a case study, you will fail. I hope you're getting this point, right? So you have to sync your answer. You have to blend your answer 
to the case study as much as possible. But again, I'm saying not, not every mark is linked to the case study. There might be certain marks, which is just testing your knowledge, and there might be a greater proportion of marks testing your application. So you have to be very sound. I, I'll just come back to this again. Elements of the question. Elements of the question may test knowledge of I, ISAs, International Standards on Auditing, which we'll be covering in our syllabus. Candidates are reminded that there is no credit. Look at this. There is no credit available for listing the ISA number. And as such, rote learning of the ISAs is not appropriate. Rather, an understanding of the ISAs main principle is important. Is the examiner saying you should rote learn the ISA? Big cross. Is the examiner saying you should put the number of the ISA in the exam paper? ISA 510, ISA 450? No, big cross, no marks. So no need to put the name of the ISA. No need to put the number of the ISA. Uh, no need to have a rote learning of the ISA. It's just about you have a central idea about ISA. Suppose we're discussing the ISA 510 opening balances. You should have a central idea of opening balances. Or we're discussing the ISA 580 representation letter. So you should have a, uh, you should have a central idea of representation letter. You cannot just learn you cannot just have a rote learning of ISA 580. You will make your life difficult, right? Is, is the last bullet clear to all of you? Is the examining team encouraging rote learning? Is the examining team encouraging that you uh, reproduce the ISA? You put the name of the ISA, you put the number of the ISA. Is everyone clear on the last bullet? Okay, that's great. So please ensure that in the section A, your answer has to blend with the case study and no memorization, no memorizations of the ISAs, right? I'll make a summary of what we learned from the section A, question number one. Let's go back to my support file. Okay, now when you look at the question number one, particularly, which is worth 30 marks, what we got from it? Number one, no need to memorize the ISAs or wrote, learn them or wrote, learn them. Number two, no need to put the name and number of ISA in exam answer. There is no credit for that. There is no marks available for it. When you see the examiner answer, examiner will write it because the examiner answer is a tutorial guidance. You cannot just replicate the examiner answer. You cannot say, oh, I, I saw the examiner writing the name of the ISA and the number of the ISA. No, examiner answer is a tutorial guidance. You cannot just replicate everything in the examiner answer because the examining team is telling you that there is no need to put the name and the number of the ISA. You're wasting your time on it and there are no marks available for it. So please understand the message from the examining team. Number two, number three, the 30 marks <clears throat> will uh, consist of a blend of knowledge, blend of application, a blend of application case study plus knowledge marks. But again, the majority marks will be on application. Full stop, majority of the marks will be on application majority of the marks will be on application. The last thing from the section question number one, your answer should blend or sync or absorb with the case study. The more points you pick from the case in your answer, the better you are to score good marks. Look at the bullet number fourth on your screen. Your answer should blend. Your answer should sink. Your answer should absorb with the case study. The more points you pick from the case, the better. If you're writing a hypothetical answer, worst. If you're writing a generic answer, worst. Because when there is a case study, you should absorb it in your answer. So the more points you pick up from the case study, the better for you to score good marks. Is that clear to all of you? So that's one of the reasons why students even fail in the double A paper, right? This last bullet is one of the reasons, right? Why we have a low passing rates in the double A paper. Extremely important. Okay, let's go down to the other questions, right? If you're all clear with this, I'll, I'll share this file with you. Just take a printout and go through it. Okay, back to the last two questions. 
from the section B, we have the 20 marks question. Okay, again, something remaining from the 30 marks question. So just mo mo moving on that. Again, the 30 marks question, right? It is particularly important that candidates focus on requirements in this question and allocate their time accordingly because it's a 30 marks question. So candidates should spend 54 minutes there. So 54 minutes again is the time for this 30 marks question, just like we had for section A, which was worth 30 marks. Candidates are reminded how important is it to plan the answer uh, before you answer. So planning is important before you answer. I will just make you realizable of that shortly. This will help you ensure that you provide a focus. If you plan your answer, more likely you will, you, will, you will blend your answer with the case study. If you are not planning your answer, you might write very hypothetical answer. You might write a very generic answer. So planning leads to perfection. Planning leads to absorbing the case. Planning leads to sinking the case. And when I, when I solve the past papers in the life classes, you will see how much time I spend on planning the answer, brainstorming the answer. If you have a perfect brainstorming of the answer, writing the answer becomes extremely easier. As part of this planning process, candidates are also encouraged to read the requirements. So you need to read the requirement carefully, verbs carefully. Is the examiner asking you to explain something? Is the examiner is asking you to identify something? Is the examiner asking you to recommend something? Once, once we go into the drilling sessions in the AA paper, and once I solve papers with you, I will make you realizable of the fact how important the verbs are. What does explain means? What does describe means? What does recommend means? What does evaluate means? So you should be very sound on the verbs uh, with the requirements. So that's, that's very important. So you should uh, know what is the examiner asking you. Describe, explain, list. So uh, how lengthy answer will you be writing? Explain is different, describe is different, list is different. So your length of answer will vary with the verbs being used for. So one last stretch on the section uh, B, question number one, the total time you have for it. Total time for question one, 30 marks is 54 minutes. How much is reading and planning and how much is writing? I'll come to that shortly. So, but the 54 minutes is the total time you have for the question number one worth 30 marks. Is that clear to all of you? Okay, can we move on to the next one? Question number two and three. Okay, question of the 20 marks, right? Together, whether it is two, whether it is three. These questions, each worth 20 marks, will again be based around a scenario and will predominantly test areas of planning and risk or internal controls and audit evidence. See again, the same repetition. Uh, it will be a scenario, will test areas of risk, will test areas of internal controls, will test areas of audit evidence. In addition, may feature other areas of the syllabus. The approach to answering the 20 marks question is similar to that of the 30 marks question, because again, it's a case study. So everything remains the same. The only difference is because it's a 20 marks question. So every 20 marks question, you have 36 minutes, 36 minutes for every 20 marks question, right? The rest remains the same. Uh, for all questions in the section B, for all questions in the section B, the scenario may be based on a profit seeking organization or a non-profit organization. Uh, and it is assumed that all entities will be computer-based systems. So see this, either the examiner will give you a profit-seeking organization or a charity, non-profit organization. You should know the attributes of a charity. I'll be, I'll be guiding you about that. There might be a profit-seeking organization like a listed company. There might be a charity in the case study uh, and it will make a difference when you're answering the question. It is assumed that every organization giving to, given to you in the paper will be using computers. Is that clear? Every organization given to you in the paper is using computers. Is, is that what the examiner is telling you? So it is assumed that all entities will be using computers given to you in the exam paper. So if you're writing a certain computer-based procedure, or a certain computer-based answer, that's perfectly fine because it is assumed that the organizations given in the case study are using computers. So that's extremely important. So what, what's the summary for the section B then? The summary for the section B is that the question number two and question number three, each worth 20 marks and the time management, time to be allocated 
to each of the 20 marks question is 36 minutes, right? Is 30, is 36 minutes, right? That's how things have to be looked into. But again, you need to understand that the, the uh, question number one, two, and three, they're all scenario-based. So most of the features we discussed in question one remains the same, and that's how things progress. Now, before I move on and before we wrap up things, just understand one very important thing here. Most of the time, when you look at the section B of the paper, which is like uh, 70 marks, and you take a deep look inside the section B, a deep look inside section B worth 70 marks in terms of syllabus testing. Now, the topics which comes in section B, you scan every past paper available and you will conclude yourself that what the tutor told you is right, that every time you look at a section B, in section B, there has to be one question from risk assessment planning and risk assessment. So one question is for sure from planning and risk assessment. So a certain number of marks out of 70 will be allocated to planning and risk assessment. Internal controls, uh, it's very difficult that you find a section B without internal controls. A question asking you uh, weaknesses in internal controls, weaknesses in internal controls, or a question asking you to perform the test of controls. And that's quite a regular feature of the section B. Then. Substantive procedures is quite a regular uh, part of the section B. That's basically audit evidence, right? Substantive procedure. Substantive procedure is a very regular feature. Then questions on going concern, questions on subsequent events, questions on audit report. Audit report is like a fundamental part of the section B. These are, these are six critical areas which develop the 70 marks paper. So if you're good on substantive procedures, you're good on test of controls, you're good on weaknesses in internal control, you are good on planning and risk assessment, you are good on going concern, you're good on subsequent events, you're good on audit report, you will survive the section B. Because every time you open a section B from the past paper, uh, the section B comprise of these six areas. You will not find uh, any unusual surprise in the section B beyond these six areas. So when we are focusing on our AA classes, I will consider them as core areas. We'll spend a lot of time on test of controls, weaknesses in internal control, planning and risk assessment. We'll spend a lot of time on substantive procedures, going concern, subsequent events and audit report, right? You have to be very critical of that, right? Every time you look into the section B. So these are core areas. So deep look inside section B, worth 70 marks in terms of syllabus testing and the core areas. So this becomes the core areas, right? So please, this is important. Uh, just let's underline that and just let put that in red. This is extremely important for all of you, right? Okay, now that's wrapping up the understanding of the paper format. I hope you're all sound enough with the paper format. You all sound enough with section A. You're all sound enough with section B. What's in the section A and what's in the section B, right? So that's how you're looking at your paper. Three OT cases and three constructed response questions, right? But if you count them the other way, every OT case has five questions, right? So that makes total 15 questions to answer. And then you have three constructed response questions. So that's 15, 16, 17, 18. So in total, you have 18, right? Now, lots of time when you look at the papers, like the one we were looking at, look at the number of the question. See, examiner is using the uh, number 16. So because one to 15 is the, construct, is the OT cases, right? So examiner is using the number 16, which is basically the question number one worth 30 marks, right? So I hope the 16 will not distract you. 16, 17, 17 is the first question of 20 marks and then 18. 18 is the second question worth 20 marks, right? So in total, you have 18 questions because 15 questions are OT, OT questions. And then you have question number 16 worth 30 marks, 17 worth 20 marks and 18 worth 20 marks. I hope you're all clear on that, right? Okay, moving onwards. 
time management, extremely important. Now, listen to me carefully. We just had a word on how much time to be allocated to every question. And we got a conclusion that in the section A, you have total of 54 minutes, right? Now, when you have 54 minutes in the section A and you have three OT cases, how much time will you give to every OT case? To the OT case one, you will give 18 minutes. To the OT case two, you will give 18 minutes. To the OT case three, you will give 18 minutes. So every OT case will take how much time? 18 minutes. So you have three OT cases and you get a total of 54 minutes for the section A. Now, how much time you will be spending on reading and planning and then taking the right answer? Let's make the divide on the word file. Okay, let's look at the time management critically. How important the time management is for the AA paper. Time management. Now, when you look inside time management, you have a section A, which is worth 30 marks. And 30 marks means in total, you have 54 minutes in total. Now, you have OT case one, 10 marks. So 10 marks means you have 18 minutes. And the same goes with OT case two, OT case three, right? OT case two and OT case three. OT case two, OT case three, 18 marks and total 54. Now the rule of the thumb says, the, the rule of thumb is one fourth of your time should be spent on reading and planning. So you read the case and you plan the case, the OT case is right, read and plan and three fourth of the time should be spent on writing the answer. Now, how would you go about it? You have 18 minutes, right? In the OT case one. So 18 minutes, how much is the reading and planning time? 18 minutes, one fourth. What is one fourth of the 18 minutes? And can anyone find that out? One fourth of the 18 minutes. Can anyone give me the quick answer? One fourth of the 18 minutes. Waiting for the answers. Okay, 4.5 minutes, okay. 4.5 minutes. So that's roughly like five minutes, right? Five minutes should be spent on reading and planning of the OT case one. And then how much should be the writing time after five minutes gone? The writing time is like three fourth minutes. Just give me one minute, three fourth minute. So writing time is five gone. So we have 13 minutes of the right of the taking the right answers. So how many OTs, how many OT questions we have? 13 minutes divided by five OT questions. So how much time should I spend on one OT question to take the right answer? 13 divided by five is how much? 2.6, 2.6. Two point six minutes per OT question to tick the right answer. Now listen to me carefully. If I look at one OT case, how much time I have to read one OT case? Five minutes. Is that good enough to understand and to absorb? Excellent. After five minutes gone, I have 13 minutes. Now in 13 minutes, I have to Look at the question number one, two, three, four, five. On each question, I have 2.6 minutes. And in 2.6 minutes, I need to decide the right answer. See this, if I can show you back again, uh, the word, the PDF file. Look at this question on your screen now. See, you open the section A and you have a case study, right? You read this case study in five minutes, the tree company, the bush company, the plant company, you read all this and you understand all this in five minutes, right? See the case and the case gets over in five minutes. Now you're ready for the remaining 13 minutes. You look at the first question and you look at the first question asking you, 
which of the following statement correctly explain the possible threats to Hoti and company's independence and recommend an appropriate safeguard in relation to their audit of tree company? The option one, the option two, the option three. You have to choose the best answer. Is A the best answer? Is B the best answer? Is C the best answer? And is D the best answer? How much time you have for this? How much time you have for this? For this, you have 2.6 minutes per question. Is that good? Is that bad? 2.6 minutes is such a good time to carefully think the right answer. You cannot be in rush. You say, oh, uh, uh, OTs are so difficult. We have to be, uh, you, you come in panic. No, 2.6 minutes cannot create panic. 2.6 minutes. Can I can I comfortably choose the right answer in 2.6 minutes? Can I easily choose the right answer in 2.6 minutes? Do I have good enough time, everyone? So is there any need of a panic in choosing the right answer? Is there any need of a panic in, uh, in just being desperate choosing the right answer? So I hope you're getting the fact, you're getting the realization here. Right? So how much time you have to read an OT case? Five minutes. And how much time you have uh, on every OT question? On every OT question, you have 2.6 minutes, right? Is that, is that time management clear to all of you? Okay, that's great. So we were discussing that three fourth is like 13 minutes, right? So 13 minutes divided by five OT questions you have and you get across and you get across 2.6 minutes per OT question to take the right answer. Is that clear to all of you? So this is the time management you will follow for OT case one. You will follow this time management for OT case two and you will follow this time management for OT case three. I hope you will stick to this time management when you're practicing at home, right? Now let's look at the section B. Now, when you come to the section B of the paper, section B. Now in section B, how many marks we have? 70 marks. Now 70 marks multiplied by 1.8 minutes per mark is equal to 126 minutes. We have a total of 126 minutes for section B, right? And we have a total of 54 minutes in the section A. Now, you have a question number one worth 30 marks. 30 marks multiplied by 1.8 is equal to 54 minutes. This is the total time. Now you break the total time, right? One fourth is the reading and planning and three fourth is the writing. So how much is uh, one fourth of 854 minutes? One fourth of the 54 minutes is how much? What is one fourth of the 54 minutes? 13.5, okay, 13.5 or bracket 14 minutes. So we have 14 minutes to read and plan the question number one, which is a big case study, right? We need to understand the requirements. We need to understand the case study and we'll do that in 14 minutes. So how much time are we left for writing? 40 minutes, 40 minutes of the writing time. Is that clear? I I'm just rounding it off, right? 14 minutes, right, of reading and planning time. So is, is, is question number one a big case study? Yes, you need to read the case. You need to understand the requirements. So what will you do in 14 minutes? In 14 minutes, uh, you will read the case plus understand the requirements, understand the requirements. So when you're practicing at home, you should ensure 14 minutes is spent on reading and planning and understanding the requirements. And then the 40 minutes is spent on writing a good answer. You get to the question number two and three, uh, each worth 30 marks. Multiply by 1.8 minutes per mark is equal to 
36 minutes, right? So 36 minutes for each of the question two and three, each of the question two and three. Now you break that one fourth is the reading and planning time. How much is one fourth of 36 minutes? Reading and planning. Five, okay, five minutes. No, one fourth of 36 minutes. Nine, sorry. Sorry, 20 marks, sorry. 20 marks multiplied by 1.8 is 36 minutes. Thank you for the correction. Okay, so nine minutes, right? So we have to spend nine minutes on reading and planning. And then we have the three fourth time for writing. Okay, so three fourth, that means another 27 minutes, right? So we have 27 minutes to write. So in nine minutes, you will read the case and understand the requirement. Read the case plus understand the requirements. And then in the 27 minutes, you write for each of the two questions, 20 and 20. So is everyone clear with the rule of thumb? The rule of thumb given by ACCA is that one fourth of your time should be spent on reading and planning and the three fourth time should be spent on writing. If you follow that rule, things will become easier for you because the, the time you spend on reading and planning, the contribution, the investment is worthy. Look, look at the statement I'm writing here. Student note, the investment of time you do on reading and planning is worthful because is worthful is worthy sorry because the return you get for this investment is a good quality answer so i hope this is not a bad investment this is not a bad investment because this investment is giving you a good return. This investment is giving you an answer, which is a quality answer. So please ensure you stick to this formula of one fourth and three fourth. I hope you're all satisfied with this time management allocation between section A and section B, because that's a frequently asked question. How much time to be allocated? I hope you're all sound and clear with time management, right? Everyone. So, we have done the section A, 54 minutes, section B, 126 minutes. We have individual times, total times, 54 minutes, 36 minutes. But I've, I've also broken those 36 minutes and 54 minutes into one fourth and three fourth for the sake of your understanding. Is that clear? Okay, now quickly down to a few of the last things. Syllabus, the syllabus is not big enough for AA. Uh, there are just syllabus area A, audit framework and regulation. That's a miscellaneous syllabus, should not take much time. B, planning and risk, a very important syllabus area because it comes in section B. C, internal controls. D, audit evidence. And E, review and reporting. This is, this is the core syllabus, right? This is known as the core syllabus. And this is very, very important. This is just like a formality which, with which we will be starting classes from tomorrow. Formality. Audit, framework, and regular. Basic, some warm-up. Warm-up. B, C, D, E, extensive practice, past papers, rigorous practice. Uh, you will get involved in B, C, D, E, right? So this is not a big syllabus area. We have three classes a week uh, and uh, looking at the five syllabus areas, we'll be completing things well on time. So that's how things will be. The very first class after the orientation class will start with this syllabus area A. We'll complete it first. Then we move to B, then we move to C, then we move to D, then we move to E. When, whenever I'm discussing a syllabus area with you, I'll be guiding you about how to prepare, what is the exam importance, which past papers to do. So for every syllabus area, I'll give you a specific exam guidance. Is that clear to all of you? So every syllabus area will have an exam specific session in which I'll give you the exam importance to that syllabus area. Right. And then I'll be allocating assignments to you. You will be solving the assignments and submitting them to me through uh, through an email. I'll, I'll be providing you that email in the WhatsApp group. OK, now this is the syllabus, right? <clears throat> now, just 
looking at the final things, the capabilities, uh, please ensure you go over the capabilities yourself because it's too early to discuss capabilities at this level. Every syllabus area, A, B, C, D, E, five. Every syllabus area, there is a capability which you should have, right? Right. Assignments is the regular part of this double A syllabus, right? I'll be allocating assignments to you. You will be emailing assignments to me. I will be giving you feedbacks on that. This is a critical success factor of my of my coverage of double A, right? Uh, assignments. As a tutor, I love that students submit assignments and I'm very much into checking assignments and responding them back through emails, right? So that will be a regular feature of this double A syllabus and will be a very, very important to overcome the exam fear and pressure. Okay, now every syllabus area have a capability. I will be covering the capabilities when we'll start a certain syllabus area. Suppose tomorrow we'll start the syllabus area A, so I'll discuss the capabilities with you for A. When we start B, I'll discuss the capability of B with you. Then we'll start with C, I'll discuss the capabilities of C with you, D and E. So we'll do these capabilities whenever we start a certain syllabus area. So you can, you can just go over the presentation, uh, see the capability one, this is for syllabus area A. Capability two, this is for syllabus area B. Capability three, this is for syllabus area C. Capability four, syllabus area D. And capability five, syllabus area E. So every syllabus area has a capability. We'll be covering these capabilities with every syllabus area to make sense. If I just discuss them with you without knowing the syllabus will be useless. I hope you agree with me. So I'll just keep the capabilities confined to the opening of every syllabus area because that will make more sense. We'll discuss the capability and then start the so, so tomorrow we have the section A starting, right? So once I start the section A tomorrow, I'll discuss the capability of the section A with you and then we'll start rolling the section A syllabus in the classrooms. Is that clear? So these are capabilities which will keep coming in the future classes. Resources, finally, what resources you need to study the AA? Because there are frequently asked questions around resources. How many past papers? Should I get the kit? Should I read the book? Should I don't read the book? Let's get answers to each of those questions. Key resources. <clears throat> now, when I was preparing myself for this lecture, the orientation lecture, uh, I thought uh, that these are the key resources to study the AA paper and they are right in front of your screen. I'll, I'll be guiding you about each one of them uh, so that you know exactly how to go about each of the key resources. The first key resource to me is the technical articles. And as a tutor, for me, articles is number one. Whether I teach SPL paper or I teach the AAA paper, for me, articles is the first source of knowledge because the knowledge you're getting from articles is the mindset of the examiner. When you read a BPP book or you read a Kaplan book, that is the knowledge of the publisher. But when you read the article, the article is the knowledge of the examining team. What is going inside the mindset of the examining team? So the better uh, idea or better perception you get about AA is from the articles. Yes, in a certain syllabus area, if you don't have an article, you have to go to the book. So if there is an article, I will prefer article over book. But if there is no article, then I will say, okay, read the book. So article is first, book is second. So in a certain syllabus area, we might have article. I'll say, okay, just read the article and listen to my lecture, fine. But in a certain syllabus area, I'll say, no, there is no article. So listen to my lecture and then read the book. Is that clear to all of you? So articles are first. Now, what I have done good for you I've just downloaded those articles and I have put those articles in my Google Drive. I'll be sharing the Google Drive with you uh, on your WhatsApp group, so don't worry about it. Just give me one minute so I can sh show you the Google Drive on your screen. Okay, can you see the Google Drive in front of your screen, everyone? Yes. Okay. Thank you. So this is the drive I will be sharing with you and this drive will become healthy as the course progress. Currently, what I have kept in the drive, uh, I've kept the past papers in the drive. I hope you can see those past papers coming as PDF and they are the only past papers available on the AA website. So these are the past papers which are available on the AA website. One, two, three, 
four, five, six, seven. So only seven past papers are available on the AA website. I've downloaded all of them and put them here on the drive. So it's easier for you to get them from one place. Uh, if there is any extra past paper we are doing in class, which is not available on the AA website, I'll, I'll just put the, that past paper in the drive. So this drive will become healthier over the next few weeks. Then you can see the folder in the drive. Can you see all the, uh, can you see the folder articles to read? Right? So I'll, I'll click on the folder articles to read. And inside that, all the articles are, have been put here. How many articles in total? Count them up. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 15 articles to read, not much. So 15 articles. Whenever there is a need to read article, I will be guiding you about that. So both we're doing a topic in the class and there is an article for that. So I will immediately recommend you read the article after the end of the lecture today. So once you end the lecture, you will, you will, you'll take a printout of the article and you'll start reading it and you make your notes. So articles are must, right? You cannot just ignore articles. You cannot just ignore articles. You need to blend the article with the tutor lecture. You need to develop your own notes, right? Is that clear? Okay, great. So how many articles to read? In total, 15. Now listen to me very carefully, something. Mm, I just let me go back to my support file. We are discussing the key resources, right? Because I just need to make a study planner for you uh, in the next 30 minutes before we wind up the session today. Okay, uh, I just want to make a right study approach for all of you. Study approach, the right one. I hope you can all see the word file on your screen, right? The study approach, the right one. Listen to it very carefully. Now, when you are attending a lecture, right? Each lecture of AA will be uploaded on the portal whether you watch it live or not. So each lecture will get uploaded on the portal with a support file, with a support file of the lecture. What is the support file? The one I'm writing currently. So when I upload the orientation lecture today, it, the, the file I'm writing on currently will get uploaded with it as an orientation support file. So with a support file of the lecture in PDF form. So there will be an orientation video lecture and there will be an orientation PDF file. So the PDF file is what I'm writing on the screen, right? So every lecture will have a support file uh, in the PDF form. So you can just download that. So when you're watching a lecture in, in the live class is something different, right? In the live class, you're looking at me talking to you and I'm writing as well. But if you are watching a pre-recorded class, how would you go about it? Each lecture will, uh, will be on the portal with a support file of the lecture in PDF form. Before you watch, before you watch or re-watch a lecture on the portal, first download the support file. First download the support file and keep the support file with you on the table. Download, first download the support file and take a print out and keep the support file with you on the table and then start to play the lecture. Then start to play the lecture. Now, when you are listening to the lecture, you can add on, you can add on things to the support file. You can add on things to the support file with using a pen. So you can add something on the support file. You have a printout, right? You have keeping a printout with you. So you're listening to my lecture. And if you want to add something extra, you can add something extra to the same support file. You can add things on the support file using a pen. Uh, and at the end of the lecture, at the end of the lecture, the printout will become your notes for the lecture. Put all the lecture notes in order in 
a box file. So you will start maintaining your double a box file, right? So you download a support file. You keep it on the table with you and you start watching my lecture in the lecture. If you think there's something extra, I need to write it down. Just keep a pen with you and keep writing it down on the support file you already have. Now, suppose this is an orientation class and everything I'm writing on the screen comes to you, but you believe there is something extra the tutor told, but didn't wrote and you want to write it down, just write it down. So at the end of the lecture, will that support file become a proper notes for you? Just like you take a, a physical class, everyone. Are you getting the step number one, step number two, and step number three? Are you comfortable with the step one, two, three, how it's going in order? Right? So put all the lecture notes in order in a box file. So after a month, when you look at your box file, it becomes healthy, healthy, and healthy. And you have notes going into the box file, right? Now, last thing. If in a lecture, if in a lecture, if in a lecture, the tutor mentioned to read an article, you will immediately read the article. You will immediately read the article. You will immediately reading the article, uh, immediately read the article after the end of the lecture and develop notes for the article or itself develop the notes for the articles in a summarized form and put that with the lecture file put that with the lecture file in box file so there might be uh, suppose you're attending a lecture number seven and lecture number seven has a support file you scribble it out put it in the box file but with lecture seven there was an article to read so lecture seven support file followed by the summary of the article. So this way you accumulate your notes lecture by lecture. So your box file has to be very organized. Orientation lecture, lecture one, lecture two, lecture three, lecture four, lecture five, lecture six, lecture 27, lecture 28, lecture 29, lecture 30. So you have to arrange the box file in order. And with every lecture, you will have a support file, but not necessarily every lecture has an article to read. Where there is a need to read an article, then try to read it as soon as possible and develop your notes and link that notes with the lecture support file. Is that clear to you? If a lecture, if a lecture does not have a article to read, then listen to the tutor carefully. Then listen to the tutor carefully, whether to read the book or not because there might be some miscellaneous areas. For miscellaneous areas, I will not recommend you to read the book, right? So if a lecture does not have an, uh, does not have an article to read, then listen to the tutor carefully, whether to read book or not. So not necessarily for every topic, I recommend you read the book. In certain topics, the core topics, I might, because there might be miscellaneous areas like the syllabus area A. For syllabus area A, I might not, might not ask you to read the book. You're wasting your time reading the book. My lecture will be so productive that there will be no need for a book reading for syllabus area A, for example. But yes, for syllabus area B, C, D, E, there might be a need for reading books in certain areas. Is that clear to all of you? So are you following this approach? One, two, three, four, five. Is everyone clear with one, two, three, four, five? Is, is, is that giving you the right direction what to do? That's great, right? Okay, now let's move back to what I was discussing with you. So we've done the articles, right? 15 articles. And wherever I recommend you the articles, you will read them, right? Now, just to show you a glimpse of the future. See, for example, tomorrow when I start my classes, Suppose I start my classes with syllabus area A tomorrow. Now, when I start the syllabus area A, I'll tell you what's inside the syllabus area A. So you'll get, oh, these are four topics inside the syllabus area A. Then I'll take you to, the, uh, to every syllabus area out of the four. And we'll start with the first syllabus area, concept of audit, like this. Sorry, just one minute. Uh, my certain slides are just... Uh, not working just give me one second i can just show you that in a very clear clearful manner just give me one second for it sorry my certain slides are just like uh, hidden so i just want to show you how things will work from tomorrow
Okay, can you see the presentation back again? Suppose I open the syllabus area A tomorrow, and I tell you that in the syllabus area A, there are, this is a syllabus area A, this is the four topics inside the syllabus area A as per the syllabus of AA. Uh, we'll open the first topic. See, every time I open a topic, you will see two boxes on your screen. You will see a top a box of exam. You will see a box of exam and you will see a box of article. Now, the topic one, we will start tomorrow because it's a miscellaneous topic. There is no exam question on it and there is no article on it. See? This is how you need to go with your syllabus. Now, every topic I start right on the very first slide of the topic, you will get to know, oh, is there any exam question? Is there no exam question? Is there an article? Is there no article? Right, is that clear to all of you? So there will be two boxes, exam box and article box. If there are exam questions, they will appear in the exam box. If there is an article, it will appear in the article box, right? So this is how you should go with my presentations and every, presentation slide will be shared with you on in the PDF form in your Google Drive. So every presentation slide will be shared with you. So they will also become your class notes, right? They will also become your class notes. So the presentations, I've already shared the orientation presentation with you, right? So you can, you can, down, you can take a printout of that. So automatically becomes your notes, right? So this is how things will be. So technical articles in 15 in total, wherever possible, I'll recommend you. Study support videos. These are extremely important. Where possible, I'll recommend you to go with the study support videos. Let me show you what study support videos are basically. Uh, okay. Can you just see the technical articles? Okay. This is the web page of technical articles. Can you see? Can you see the technical articles on your screen? The web page for AA. Okay, great. You go down, and you see these technical articles. I've downloaded all of them and put them in the Google Drive. So no, no tensions, right? I've I already downloaded them and put them in the Google Drive. But look at the technical articles. When you end the technical articles, see. Study support videos. Can you see the study support videos here? Now, there might be a situation that I complete a lecture and then I ask you, watch the study support video. I'll give you the hyperlink of that when needed. So there are a couple of study support videos put by uh, the AA team here on different syllabus areas. There are like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. There are nine videos uploaded by AA examining team. Now, if I'm covering a certain syllabus area and I believe that you should watch a video, I will give you the hyperlink of that video in the lecture. So when, once you complete the lecture, you will go and watch the video. So these study support videos are extremely important. Wherever necessary, I will recommend you to go and watch them, right? So this is the second thing, right? Which is part of the resources. So study support videos where necessary. I will be recommending you as a tutor. So don't take tensions about that. The articles are already put in the Google Drive. And once I recommend you to read, you will start reading them. Textbooks. Now understand carefully. There are two types of students. One very book oriented student. One very conceptual students. You need to decide who you are. If you are a very booky student, textbooks, read, reading, 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 reading. And that's the way you've passed your other ACCA papers. Then please read the book. Please read the book. But if you have been a student uh, working with tutor notes, going with the tutor, passing the papers, not putting much time on the book, then follow the same strategy for AA. So I cannot just put one thing on all of you because every student is unique. Some like books, some don't like books. Some take the tutor notes, some take the books. Some read the tutor notes and the books together. Some only read the tutor notes and pass the paper, decide yourself. But I've given you one strategy that there might be certain syllabus areas where I myself will be recommending you to read the book. So it's better to buy it. So in certain areas, when there is an article, I will say, read the article, no books. In certain areas, I'll say, read the book. Which book I prefer as a tutor? Kaplan. 
because BPP is very congested. BPP is very dense. BPP will just waste your time because if you start reading a BPP book, it will take you time and time and time and you will never come out of the book and your exam comes. Kaplan is such a neat and clean book uh, with concepts, flow charts, uh, with good examples. But if you are a student who likes BPP, then please follow BPP because there are students who love BPP, there are students who love Kaplan. As a tutor, I do love Kaplan. It's my recommendation. But if you want to follow BPP because you have, you have been following it, go with it. I have no issues with any books, right? Past papers. There are seven past papers available on the website. And all the seven past papers have been downloaded and put in the Google Drive for you. But if there is, an, if there is any old past paper, which I do with you, which is not available uh, on the website of AA, I will be sharing that with you. So currently, there are just seven past papers put on the drive. And these are the seven uh, which ACCA has put on the website. So these are the must to do, right? These are the must to do. If I can just show you those past papers on the website. Uh, can you see the past exam library on your screen? So these are the exam papers given by ACCA for AA. And I put all of them in the drive. Uh, the March, June 21, the September, December 20, the March, July 20, the September, December 19, the March, June 19, the September, December 18, and the March, June 18. So these seven papers have been put on the drive. But if you do any paper beside these, I will be sharing that with you as and when needed. So currently, there are seven papers on the drive. Marking schemes uh, is a very key resource. Once I start practicing with you in the classrooms, I will be guiding you about marking schemes. I will be guiding you how you should know the marking scheme. What is the source of knowing the marking schemes? And marking scheme will become a very valuable resource to study the AA paper. And I will be guiding you about that when the time comes in. Examiner reports, I will encourage a lot of time to read the examiner reports. I will be reading them in the live classes with you so that you get the motivation to read them. So examiner reports, some of them will, uh, some of them, uh, I will be reading them in the class and some of them will be given to you as assignments because you learn a lot from examiner reports. You learn the criticism from the examiner report. You learn the do's and don'ts from the examiner report. So I will prefer that we do read examiner reports, the recent one in the live classes and the recent ones are also given to you for reading at home because examiner report is a very key resource. But again, examiner reports and marking schemes will come later in the online classes once we start the practice phase of the syllabus areas. And the practice platform is a key resource. You need to be aware of the practice platform. I hope you know the practice platform for AA. We'll be using it on and off in our live classes. Let me share the interface of the platform with you. I hope you can all see the uh, interface of the platform in front. And I hope you're very familiar with it. Are you all familiar with the screen coming in front of you, all of you? This is how you log into the practice platform, right? Everyone waiting for your answers. Are you familiar with the screen coming in front of you? I hope you've gone to the practice platforms for your other papers like PM, FM, text, something. Okay, AA is your first paper, Keshav, so don't worry about it. I will be guiding you uh, uh, extra on how to go about with the practice platform. For the, for the other students beside Keshav, are you familiar with this interface? Have you been logging into your practice platforms? Okay, that's great. So we'll be using the plat platform in the live classes when needed. Uh, this is the interface of the platform on the right panel. On the right panel, you can see the AA paper. I just click on the AA paper. And in the AA paper, you can see the ACC official resources, past exam libraries. Two papers have been uploaded here for the sake of your practice on the platform. Two past exam libraries, the March, June 21, and the September, December 20. Practice exams, two practice exams have been uploaded for you to practice on the platform. So you know the computer-based exams well. And specimen exam, you have one specimen exam given. And in the blank workspace, you have been given a blank workspace so you can type the answers if that question is not available on the platform. So there are like one, two, three, four, five, five questions given on the practice platform for you to practice on the platform. I will be guiding you about how you practice on the platform. I will be giving you the tips and techniques, how you can improve 
your time management on the practice platform, how you can excel in a computer-based exam, right? So Kishaf, if you're unfamiliar with this and this is your first paper, don't worry about it. You will get a proper guidance, right? Of logging into the platform and uh, how you get uh, a control on the computer-based exams, right? So practicing on the platform will be a regular feature of my AA online classes, right? On and off will be coming on the platform and I will be guiding you about the practice on the platform, writing the answers on the platform. So you will become familiar with that gradually. Is that clear to all of you? And those of you who know it, that's excellent. Okay, so that is it then for the orientation session. If you have any questions, you may ask it. We have three live classes every week on Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday for the March exams. But for the June exams, this session will be pre-recorded. For September exams, this will be a pre-recorded session. Currently, for the March exams, it's going live. But any student who wants to take admission for June or September, this sessions will be available as pre-recorded sessions. But for the live classes for March exams, we're going live every Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, 9.45 a.m. to 11.45 a.m. Pakistan Standard Time, thrice a week. So these are the resources to study uh, again, I will be reinforcing them in every lecture. Uh, the first few classes will be extremely important because you will get to know me and I will get to know you and you will start to understand the right exam rigor for the AA paper. The first few classes will be warm up, but gradually you will start getting assignments. Your workload will improve, increase. Uh, your time spent on the AA will increase and you will start to feel the pressure of the AA paper. But currently for the first 15 days, things will be very relaxed but then they will come under intense mode after the first 15 days. A any questions from your site? Uh, how was the orientation session? If you can just share a quick feedback. I hope you got to understand the AA paper in terms of the syllabus, in terms of the time management, in terms of what is in section A and section B, and even in terms of the passing rates of the paper. But again, this is just too early. This is an orientation class, a lot more to learn a lot more to go through as we go inside uh, the full classes starting from tomorrow. Yes, the recordings are available, right? So uh, again, that's not an issue of with the class timings. Uh, uh, again, every day when I conduct a lecture, uh, every uh, same day, the lecture gets uploaded on the portal, right? So if I'm conducting a lecture now, after a couple of hours, it will be available on the portal for the registered students, whichever portal you are registered with, it will be available on the portal for all of you. So no tensions for that. So if you are taking, uh, if you have offices, you cannot take the morning classes, no issues with that, because eventually every lecture gets recorded, right? And the tentative time for March exams, course completion will be by the 25th of February. So by the 25th of February, hopefully we'll be wrapping up the syllabus. So you will have 10, 10 to 11 days to sit down and study. You have to study with every class, right? Uh, you have to study with every class, uh, Mahnoor. Every class you have to study. Every week you have to study, right? You will not wait for the course to complete and study, right? With every class you study, with ev on in every week you study. So uh, you have a March exams coming up. You have to be on toes, right? Okay, then thank you so much, all of you. Uh, I'll see you back tomorrow with another live class. Uh, that's to start the syllabus area A tomorrow. Uh, and we'll be going inside the syllabus area A tomorrow and we'll be uh, talking about how you should be preparing yourself for the syllabus area A, right? Thank you so very much for participating in this first AA orientation class. Uh, I am your tutor, Kashif Kamran, signing off. Have a nice day. Take care. Goodbye and Allah Hafiz.